Welcome to another episode of Curtain Call Conversations. I am joined today by Lucy Ryan, who is also known as Ivy Page, currently out on the road with an evening of burlesque. How are you? Yeah, I'm very good. I'm very good. Um, a little tired, but uh, we were out in um, Wales last night with an evening of burlesque. Nice. That's great. How's the show going? Uh, the show is going so well. I mean, obviously, you came, didn't you, to the to the debut, the West End debut, which was the 10th of October, although it feels like it was yesterday. Yeah. Um, but the show this year has had a phenomenal amount of tour dates, so we're literally here, there and everywhere. Yeah, so what's your role? I mean, it, it was actually one of my reviewers that came to see the show um, and she absolutely loved it, um, gave it five stars, as I'm sure most people do. And um, so tell us what the what what people can expect from the show. So the show is really like a 21st century modern day variety show uh, with Beleska at its core. Um, so it has, it, has, it has something for everyone in the terms of variety show. So you have you've got circus acts, We've got incredible singers. We've got a fire breather. We've got phenomenal burlesque stars. We've got huge, uh, incredible props on the show. Yeah. Um, and then my role, and we have amazing dancers as well, showgirls and showboys. Yeah. Um, and so it's a real, a really eclectic mix and diverse mix of different performance styles. Um, and each, it's really what I think is really beautiful about the show is. Like each performer brings their own unique talent. Yeah. Um, and my role in it is I have several roles actually, on and off stage. Yeah. But on stage, I am the comp here. So yeah. Miss yeah. Ceremonies, um, and I kind of weave it all together. I like to think of myself as like I'm the audience's best friend. That's what I hope for. Yeah. But, <laughs> and then in the show, I kind of showcase my own talents as well. So yeah. singing comedy uh audience interaction uh and i think it's the most wonderful job in the world because i get to introduce my wonderful glamorous talented friends <laughs> yeah well exactly and you're on the creative side as well you mentioned there you you know you you work off off the stage as well to do with the show so how did that come about and what what's your role sort of backstage well my role um on the show currently is i'm um, my job to is like creative director and also show manager. So what that means is I'm the director of the show, but I kind of, it's important to, to mention there that each act, they're also responsible for creating their own performances. They're not my ideas, they're the performer's ideas. Yeah. What I kind of tend to do is weave it all together um, and then work with the individual artist um, to try to facilitate their ideas and also to think about how we can stage that on a bigger on a bigger stage you know a lot of some of the acts might have been crafted and performed in smaller venues uh but on one evening of the less we're playing these huge wonderful theatres yeah. so it's about we have more resources in some cases um so it's really exciting to be able to do that and then uh it might be that i will i myself might have an idea and then i'll talk to the choreographer and then she'll work with me to create something with the showgirls but also other other cast members that kind of you know this is why I think it is kind of collaborative to some degree. Yeah. We'll have ideas. So and then they'll come to me and say, Ivy, uh, what do you think of this? In fact, the ballet bar we have in the show, although I might have come up with the like work to the choreographer for the dance number, it was actually Isabella Bliss who suggested, why don't you use a ballet bar? So it's it's very much facilitated facilitative, I should say, and collaborative process. And then there is all the absolute logistical things. So from yeah. where do I pick up the artists? Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where do we drop them off? Um, and kind of looking after them and managing them and 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 you know, when you have a, a over a hundred the tour dates, yeah. that's an awful lot of infrastructure involved in making that happen. Yeah. Um, and the producers, the entertainers, there's a whole office of, of staff mm -hmm. that really do make the show happen that that I think people sometimes don't account for. Yeah. You know, they're the phone picking up, doing all the venues, booking the hotels. Mm. So there's a lot there's a lot to it. But my actual role in this show has kind of um it's been very organic. I've been involved in the show for over 10 years since oh. it very, very um first started. This show's actually it's the longest touring, if I'm not correct in saying this. Uh, I think it's the longest touring UK burlesque show, I think. Oh, okay, okay. The show was completely 2010 and at that point um I came on board in the second year of the show as a compare 
Okay. And that was just my role. Mm -hmm. um, and at that point, there was kind of somebody else doing my job. And I was just involved, involved, involved in the show, loved the show. And then a few years ago, um, James Lee Taylor, who's the executive producer of the show yeah. um, and runs the company Entertainers with his uh, dad, Mike Lee Taylor, he asked me, did I want to take the show on okay. and kind of have different responsibility? So I was just like, absolutely, over the moon. <laughs> <laughs> sure. just my, my yeah. So to be able to be more involved in kind of the shaping and the creating of it, and burlesque is my absolute passion. So yeah. to, to have this opportunity to to, to program this tour mm, yeah. um, and some of the acts that are on the show, um, you know, I've, I've, I've watched their progress and development and it's been an absolute like, joy to be able to see that. Yeah. So, yeah, so that kind of my involvement amazing so are you sort of instrumental in in as much as who appears on the show I mean do you yeah. find these acts and you you say this is what I want you know will you come and do it yeah very much so yeah so um this show's had many incredible performers over the years uh different casts and then there's some you know obviously with some type, some shows the cast yeah. changes and I always like to say that the success of this show is built on the shoulders of not just us mm. but the performers that came before us yeah but this current group of performers every every person in it is in it because I've I've programmed them and worked with them and and that that's always lovely to see when mm. you read reviews of yours or you know others and you read all these wonderful things people have said and it just makes you think like you, you kind of feel validated because you believe in that talent and that action it's nice yeah, to see course. yeah and you feel like you you chose well <laughs> yeah absolutely. yeah because you're getting that that um sort of five star reviews I mean that you know they're, they're mostly mostly five stars which is always great and it must be lovely to see that um so what what is the touring life like for you do you do you enjoy it oh I love it well I mean I can tell you this I've got favorite favorite service stations <laughs> <laughs> yeah. is it Gloucester because a lot of people uh, have Gloucester services <laughs> Gloucester we do like I like rugby <laughs> okay. um <laughs> Peterborough is a favourite. Oh, nice. Um, I think it's terrible, but anywhere we see uh, one of our cast members absolutely loves Starbucks. Okay. So, uh, I mean, love it or hate it, but anyway, <laughs> yeah. um, they, they love it. So, whenever we see one of the Starbucks, we always make a. Make a <laughs> but touring life is good. I mean, look, it's, it's busy. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we, we cover a lot of miles, we do a lot of travelling. Um, and I think that's. Testament to the performers in the show, actually, mm. in how well everybody gets on backstage. You know, it, it, we're like a working family, so it's not always it's plain sailing. You know, there's lots of yeah, sure. things we have to navigate and manage, but um, everyone's got each other's backs, which I think is really helps when you're on a, a tour. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> We have little, little traditions as well. Oh. Um, whenever it's someone's birthday, uh, we always have to get <laughs> Colin the caterpillar cake. Uh, classic, yeah. <laughs> Just become like little, and um, one of uh, Isabella Bliss, who's on the show, she's our uh, our headline burlesque star. She does an amazing um, martini blast act. Um, she is in charge of all the social media, so she's always up to to fun, she, like things getting us to do these crazy videos and yeah. um learn these things to put on TikTok. Um, oh, I don't, I see. <laughs> yeah. Not my area but, No. <laughs> but um yes yeah, so growing life is good. It's um it's not for everyone, you know, you, no. you do miss weekends and stuff. But I think with this type of job it's like if you are a performer, you're never gonna be around at the weekends. So. Yeah, sure. I mean do you do you find the audience um reaction you know dependent on where you are do you, do you find any difference with it or not do you know what I feel like with this show people come in because they love burlesque mm. and so generally we have a really warm reception um I will say last night in Wrexham the Welsh audience were quite magnificent <laughs> um and last week when we were in Scotland and we were in Scotland when there was the, the storm oh gosh uh, we missed we missed it actually where we were but okay. uh that audience just sensational yeah um, and I was like this was definitely worth driving in the rain for like this audience were they were taking the roof off oh. um, 
So uh, that's one of the things you talk about touring life is that mm. we actually go to all these different cities and towns that you probably wouldn't go to. Yeah. Um, yeah and cool. it's it's really I love that I love that and I love it when we we do often do meet and greets after the show. Okay. And that's really nice. We get lots of um like local burlesque groups come there's lots of like local chair dancing groups or we get these yeah. big parties or hen parties and mm. uh and that bit but i really really like yeah yeah i can see why um so let's talk about the voice because a lot of people may recognize you from the voice and and of course your your audition was pretty iconic i remember it i watched it you know back then so 2018 you were oh on the voice um part of Ollie Mers's team and had quite a lot with the man himself I mean it's great TV um so tell us about that I mean you know what's that experience like well that experience it, it, it was it was so much fun yeah um, everything that you saw that happened in that audition was really like nothing was planned a lot of people asked me they were like is that all set up you know TV show and editing yeah, and stuff and I said yeah promise you nothing in any way was set up and what happened when I did my audition when I was walking down you have to like you walk down mm. come up some stairs there's the big fancy set is really what the crowd the tv cameras all looking at you yeah. and as we're walking down all I kept thinking I had these really high heels on and there was like a little metal grate that I had to walk over with holes in it and I was kept thinking I hope my heel doesn't get stuck oh god yeah that- Right. And then as soon as I was walking down, somebody wolf whistled at me and I literally got oh. myself Ivy Page mode. It was like, I, right. I felt, okay, I can do this, I can do this. Mm. And I was singing and Ollie didn't turn around until right, quite near to the end. Yeah. So there was a part of me that was thinking, like, trying to be in the moment, but also thinking, oh, I don't, I don't know if anyone's going to turn around. Oh. Um, and then when he turned around and threw his jacket off on the floor... <laughs> Uh, it's, the only way I would describe it, it's like I went into doing my what, what I do in a cabaret show. Yeah. And when he threw his jacket off and his mic didn't work, but if I was in a live theatre environment, I would just improvise, and that is it, exactly what I did. Yeah. And everybody that watched that, who know, who's seen my live stage shows, was like, "That was like what you do when in a cabaret show." And I was like, "I know, except this time I did it in front of millions of people who've never seen me perform before." Yeah. Um, and it did cause quite a reaction. I think at one point I had so many um, tweets, uh, my phone shut down because it got too hot. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was you're on Newsnight. They're talking about you on Jonathan Ross. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, so it was a really exciting time. Like yeah. I, I had the best time on it. Um, and I was very open with them about being a cabaret performer. Right. I didn't want to be made to look an, a joke. Mm, yeah. Historically, cabaret hasn't always been portrayed in the best possible light. But I have to say, my experience of that TV show was not like that at all. They were very supportive of me, mm-hmm. understood that my opening look, you know, if I, I was doing it as I, my character, Ivy Page, Ivy Page wouldn't wear her normal day clothes to a gig so my yeah. kind of starting point for my outfit, obviously, was that red dress, which also yeah. you know, raised a few eyebrows. Um, yeah, Jessica Rabbit. I mean, that's the that's the phrase. <laughs> I know, I know. Real love, Jessica. Rabbit. I think for me, one of the best things that ever came out of that was uh, Tom Jones calling me a firecracker. Wow. I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, put that on the posters. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, what's he like? I mean, living legend. I, that's one of the things that I was most excited about. Obviously, yeah. I was lovely to get Ollie Mercer, my coach. He was a great coach, but yeah, the, the the music that I see, I was just like, even if I don't get through, Tom Jones will have heard me sing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, you exactly. know, uh, and he was a real gentleman. He was lovely. Come and sh- shook your hand at the end. Yeah. Um, said yeah. some really nice things about my voice. Yeah, it was really really lovely to meet him. Oh, and I have to, I was a bit starstruck. Well, it's Tom Jones, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> God, I mean, he's like top tier. I'm, well, all four judges on that show, when you were on it, I mean, they're just all incredible, I, aren't they? Jennifer Hudson's voice is... Oh, I mean, that woman could sing the phone book and she's just insane, isn't she? I mean, it's just the voice of 
well, I don't know where she gets it from. It's just heaven sent, I think. I mean, it's just beautiful. So I'm glad you had a good experience on it, though. It's nice to hear because you, you do hear stories, don't you, about those sorts of shows and how, you know, convoluted they can be and how set up they can be. But it's good to hear it. It's natural, you know. Yeah, I felt for, for me, I, I'm, a, I'm a jobbing artist. You know, it wasn't that I was, I, this was something I wanted to have a go at. Yeah. Um, and... I kind of was very much like, I need to be able to do this show and walk away from it and walk into my next gig. Yeah. Regardless of what happens, I need to maintain dignity and professionalism. Sure. So I very much wanted it from that perspective. And the um, guy that I did the duet with, um, who was a fantastic swing um, singer, really a really beautiful voice. Yeah. Both of us had a bit of an agreement and I was very much like, I won't ever do anything on stage to you that we haven't rehearsed. Right. Like, as far as I am concerned, regardless of who gets through, we are a team. Mm. We put on a show. Yeah. They, they will choose till they choose. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, rather than singing over each other or, you know, trying to keep, keep each other off guard, you know, that I would never be like that. And I didn't, I didn't want to, the experience mm. be you know my ambition to outweigh more than yeah yeah exactly I mean did it did that experience open doors for you I mean was, was yeah, that what it was about it, or yeah it, it really did I mean for me personally the the footage I got from that show definitely yeah even now opens doors for me sure um which I think, although I thought it would, I didn't still think it would be, if you see what I mean, because I was yeah. like, I don't want to trade off being on The Voice for the next 50 years. Well, exactly, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know, I, I, the way I see it is there's different chapters yeah, sure. in your career. Yeah. But certainly, because it's such a big TV show, yeah. Um, because of how many millions of people watch my audition and the subsequent press surrounding it, yeah. you know, I don't think it's unfair to say that year... Um, I was possibly one of the most memorable auditions. Mm. Um, and I find it quite interesting. Like, but I was um, doing some research for some songs I'm learning in, at the moment. Yeah. And I Googled, my favourite singer is Peggy Lee. Oh, okay. YouTube. And I come up. Oh, wow. Because, and I, that I will attribute, that must be to singing, why don't you do right on the voice? Yes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it definitely has opened doors. And I, I would... I would always be supportive when other people said to me, do you think I should do it? And I just say, just think about what it is you want to get out of it. Keep an exactly. open mind. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it really can, particularly with you know, corporate bookings and yeah. even having, like you say, firecracker stones on your posters. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> All of these things are you know, really <clears> helpful. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, where did performing start for you? I mean, what was it just, did you do sort of, you know, singing and dancing as a as a child or was it something that came a bit later on no I think my mum would probably tell you that I was just born showing off <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my earliest memory is performing in my local ballet school about four years old okay. and I, I was a flower and my hat fell off and I cried <laughs> oh. <laughs> um but I, I, you know, I come from a very working class family um my dad worked in construction. My mum worked in retail. And, um, you know, my mum did my, the absolute best for me. She put me in all the local dance schools, yeah. drama schools, singing. I worked out that I was never going to be a professional ballerina. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, and for me, like, how I got into performing is I went to um, community youth theatre run by my local theatre. Yeah. I love that. I did that every week. Um, I did drama GCC at school. Yeah. At a schools. Um, I I couldn't afford to go to drama school. My mum and dad couldn't afford to send me to drama school. Yeah. Um, so I went to Dartington College of Arts, which is a university, but the the degree was focused on like contemporary performance. Right. And the process, kind of over the final product. And actually, uh, you know, I do attribute that degree to kind of create me as the, the artist I am now, because it made you an artist capable of making your own work mm -hmm. rather than just being a jobbing actress, which is a slightly different job where you're just going to other people's castings. Yeah. I'm not I don't do that too, but um, it was very much about, well, if you, you want to make work, how are you going to make it? 
yeah yeah exactly yeah you need... yeah so you know that's kind of how I got into performing and then I, I set up a theatre company with a friend oh, right. um uh we we worked together for a few years he now he went off to produce the globe <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> um yeah. now we run another really fantastic art center um and then in 2006 that's kind of where my burlesque career uh, started. okay that's interesting uh, I am um, uh, without realizing it I've always been exploring the role of a showgirl in my theatre work but I didn't really realize that there was this whole world of burlesque I didn't have the language for it I didn't know about the history of it yeah and I saw a workshop for a week at the London International Theatre Festival run by Indigo Blue who's a really famous burlesque performer yeah and King who is a UK burlesque legend right and I begged my mum for my birthday present to send me for this workshop oh. she did and that kind of I got I met loads of other people who were all interested and then I was like oh I'm kind of doing this I didn't know like the other people were oh, right. <laughs> um really and then so I, yeah. I really got into the research of it and then I created a show called the powder room um and that was really the, the creation of Ivy Page which was very different as a character to what I am now yeah. but then even that I think as an artist you're ever changing and evolving of course, but yeah. right back then she was like a Victorian kind of strumpet actually kind of a bit Nancy-esque right I'll live yeah yeah cool. and um we did I did a show with the with a group of other performers um, we were like a collaborative group and that show got really mixed reviews people either loved it or they hated it I think we got five stars and one star oh okay but, wow <laughs> it was a real but I'm not going to say that it was the most polished fantastic show I've ever made but it was certainly the start mm. of my in burlesque yeah. and it was from there then I started getting into comparing and um people were just recommending me at that time and there weren't a huge amount of female compares as well in London at that point yeah um and then I met someone who's a wonderful friend of mine now called Sean Mooney he's a, a, a fantastic creative director himself yeah. but he asked me to perform at his birthday party at the birthday party I met the Papini sisters right who are incredible um trio of singers you know, they've won many many awards and mm -hmm. records um they asked me to be a support act for them. Okay. So um, that was at Shepherd's Bush Empire. All right, okay. So that was quite a big yeah, yeah. Big for me. And then I got this offer through from MySpace. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Um, somebody contacted me through there and asked me uh, this work inquiry. Anyway, I phoned them up and they were like, have you ever heard of John Waters? And I was like, what, John Waters, who wrote Hairspray? And they were like, yeah. Okay, well, he's coming to England and you've been shortlisted as being one of his support acts. And I was like, uh, how has he even heard of me? <laughs> I was, you know, huge. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, so I ended up um, being his support act uh, in 2008, that was, at the Hammersmith uh, Apollo. Uh, Hammersmith Apollo, isn't it? Apollo, yeah. Um, so that really launched me. Um you know that gave me a real with my career so I had a couple of nice early breaks to really establish myself and then yeah. um yeah that opened many doors I'd yeah say. amazing so the entertainers are your producers you can go on their website um to find out all the tour dates for um your show an evening of burlesque where when are you touring up until Oh well, it, this the great thing about this tour is I can tell you we've even got dates in twenty twenty five. So oh, wow, oh, yes, we, we are. You know what? We're really fortunate that uh, year on year the audiences are just coming back to this show. It's testimony, not just me, entire cast. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and we are really, you know, I sometimes think people don't thank the producers enough mm -hmm. because actually both Mike and James have really created something special with this show. And that's why I feel like it's my baby. Um, <laughs> because it's been going for such a long time. And that, that mm. in itself, I think, is a real, something really special. So we've got, I think, next year already, I think we've got 100 tour dates. Oh, wow. Gosh. So busy, busy, which is great to hear. Yeah. 
and it, it's lovely yeah. that, that you know people are so receptive to to that art form as well it, it's great I really love it so thank you so much for having a chat with me today it's been a pleasure my pleasure wishing you, so. you all the value welcome wishing you all the best for the rest of the tour whenever it finishes I mean it's a big long one so <laughs> it'll yeah, come back on and on. yes absolutely take care thank you so much Emma bye